What kind of implants and components do you use? I see... So, yeah, there are, the type of implants can be divided in some certain, well, categories. Mm -hmm. The first thing is that we do total hip, not a partial one. There is an option of a partial hip, but a partial hip usually it's for the femoral neck fracture patients or the other bone preserving procedures like resurfacing. Well, it was done in previous years. Now it's, it's, it's amount is decreasing and, and because of other issues, we try not to do it, mm -hmm. we do not do it. So other thing is the fixation of the implants. So we have two type of fixation. If we have good bone quality, we use the uncemented implants in the femoral side and on the acetabular side. Mm -hmm. So they are made of metal, usually titanium, that has the best compatibility with the human bone because of the elasticity and other pro, uh, um, technical issues. They are covered with special material that enhances ingrowth of the bone. So we have to prepare the bone, insert them with some force just mm -hmm. to keep it in place. Afterwards, it grows around or into the metal. Depends again on the implant and it stays in place. Uh, the same for the acetabulum. So we have also the same coating. We prepare the at stabilum, we impact it and it stays in place. If we achieve good bone, we have good bone quality and we achieve good fixation, we do not need any additional screws. In some cases, revision cases, these post-traumatic or osteonecrosis case when we have soft bone and so on, sometimes we have to use at stabilum with holes, then the holes, those holes are made for additional screw fixation. It means that we put screws into the bone just to keep the implant mm. in place and it's for the primary stabilization of the implant. It's the mechanical one. After a couple of weeks, the bone starts just getting inside on or on top of the implant and the bio bio biological fixation is achieved. So it means it's just bonded with your bone and it's probably for your life. Is there any way to demonstrate how this it's, puzzle works on this? It's Yeah, we would have to have additional instruments just to ream outside that stabulum, but otherwise, it goes inside, we have to impact it with a brutal force, quite brutal here. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not fitted because it's not the diameter that the acetabulum is. So during the surgery, we have bone milling machine, not milling machine, but a reaming machine. Mm -hmm. So we just ream the bone to the diameter of the acetabulum. When we see that it's enough, we take the exact size and we put inside. And you use a lot of force, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. It's not maximum force. Well, it has to be controlled, otherwise you can have fractures. So yeah. you have to bear it in mind and to, to know how hard to strike. Okay, so this one goes in here, yeah. and then what? And this is the case, for example, maybe this is not the right thing to show, just how it should look like inside the bone. Okay. But the other okay. cases, when we have the original one, this is a much larger one, it's a sample, so we would have... It won't it would fit, be but a, it's just a, a demonstration. With a, size of, for example, it has everything written on it, so it's size 16. Mm -hmm. And we would ream with 59 or 16 that we would implant the acetabular cup when it's in safe position. So we have the inlay or acetabular liner, which acts as a, as a bearing surface with a head. So this is the case. So afterwards, we put a femoral stem mm -hmm. inside the femur. We we take the head, we impact it on the femoral side, so the, we have one part, this is the femur, and we have the acetabulum. So we uh, achieve reduction of the joint, and that's it. So the muscles and capsule is holding everything together, jo the joint can move up to 155 degrees of motion, so it's a it's, it's substantial amount and it's quite enough. Sometimes we have additional features on the acetabular side, like this roof, for example, when we use it in the posterior approach, so it helps us to, do, to diminish or reduce the dislocation rate up to, to zero, more, less than zero. So it's, it's comparable to other approaches like anterior that everyone says that it's the best because of the dislocations. But otherwise, when you do the surgery correctly, the risk of complications, it's the same depending on the approach. So we have this movement. Mm -hmm. And other cases when we have poor bone quality, but it's well usually in the early elderly patients or the rheumatoid arthritis patients. So we have these polished stems that we use, 
and we filled the canal of the femur with the cement and afterwards we put inside the stem and wait for the cement to cure and it usually takes up to 10 to 12 minutes. Is so, this a literal concrete cement? Yeah. No, it's like the same, quite the same that are used on the teeth. Oh, this yeah. kind so, of cement. Yeah. So, so <laughs> it's, no, it's, yeah, it has antibiotics in it and so on. So sometimes we can play with the stem position and so on. It's, it's again, it's not uh, inferior fixation, mm -hmm. but it's, well, it's a better choice for some patients. Oh, okay. So we also use sometimes, and we have extreme cases, sometimes it's better to use even cemented than the, the uncemented. Mm -hmm. So it's not mandatory, but, but again, we take into account the patient, his disease, his old status, and then we decide what to do. And the last call is during the surgery. If we see if everything's not how it's supposed to be, so we switch and we do the best for the patient.